So what is RepMoveS that we sought this treasure so zealously? Well, RepMoveS is basically a mem copy unto itself. It's an instruction which repeatedly copies from a source to a destination. It is the repeat move string to string. Now, like RepStos, MoveS is actually its own assembly instruction that does a move of data from one memory location to the next, but it is one of the special instructions that can have the rep instruction prefix added to it so that it will do things over and over again. So all of these instructions that have a rep prefix form will use the CX register, meaning either the CX in 16-bit mode, ECX in 32-bit mode, or RCX in 64-bit mode as a counter for how many times it should loop through the operation copying memory to memory. Each time it does that operation, it's going to decrement CX by one, and when it finally hits zero, it's going to be done and it'll fall through to the next instruction. So RepMoveS stores one, two, four, or eight bytes at a time, and it's going to either have, it's going to have two main forms, either one byte form where it's going to move from memory pointed to by SI to DI, but we don't care so much. That's the sort of 16-bit form. We're going to care about the 124 or 8-byte form that's going to fill from RSI to RDI. And each time it does this operation, it is then going to increment the RDI or RSI register by however many bytes it's copying. So if it's copying one byte at a time, it's going to do a plus one to the RDI and RSI. And this basically makes it so that it'll just copy everything sequentially. So RepMoveS is basically a mem copy in a box, except the fact that there's setup that has to occur. So the three pieces of setup is that there's going to need to be an assembly instruction to move and fill in SI, ESI, or RSI with the starting source memory location. DI with the starting destination memory location, and CX, RCX in our case, with the number of times that it should store. So I've said throughout the class that, you know, we don't have memory to memory moves. Move cannot have an RMX source and an RMX destination. And that's why I'm pointing out that this is not actually the move instruction. This is move S. And frequently you'll hear it referred to as, oh, it's a rep move, it's a rep move. Well, it's a rep move S. And that's why it is allowed to do memory to memory. Quick interesting point is the fact that it has hard coded into this assembly instruction that it must use only RDI and RSI. It has no other choices for other registers to copy memory to memory. And that has implications then for callee save and caller save registers. So because Visual Studio treats this as a callee save register, it's going to need to save and restore this. And we can actually see that over in our assembly. So here, when we finally made our way to RepMoveS, we can see that the first thing it does is push RDI, push RSI. And the last thing it does before it returns is it's going to pop RSI and pop RDI. So now that we know what RepMoveS is doing, basically we see, okay, push the callee save registers, take R11 and put it into RAX. Well, we didn't say RepMoveS has anything to do with RAX, so what's up with that? If we go back and we search through our pseudocode, we see that R11 holds RCX, holds the destination. And so it's actually the case that memcopy, if you go look at the manual, it is supposed to return the original destination address. So it's moving the dest into RAX because that's going to be the return value. Then we see RCX moved into DI, so RCX destination. Let's check it out. RCX destination, it checks out. R8 into RCX. Well, that's the RCX is the counter. It's the number of times it's going to do a memory to memory copy. So that makes sense because that's our size, which is now 84 in the final version of this. And R10 into RSI. R10 is the source. So source, destination, count, and then boom, rep move S. How big is it doing? This one is doing one byte at a time because it's doing a byte pointer. Now they could do larger chunks at a time, they could do eight bytes at a time, but if we sort of examine this pseudocode and we get a sense of, well, if it's you know greater than 10 and it's greater than hex 20, and it's greater than hex 80, the thing is in order to be generic, it could be 81, it could be 82, it could be 83. So you're not gonna to wanna to be copying eight bytes at a time for that. So to make it generic, they basically just treat it as one byte at a time so that it can handle any size that's greater than 80. 
And then that's pretty much it. It's going to do the copy of whatever to whatever, and then it's going to restore the registers and return back out. So here's a slightly cleaned up version of the pseudocode that I was writing out on the fly. You can see if length is less than 10, go to here, and it's going to do some move instructions. If length is greater than 10, but less than 20, then it goes here and uses these move ups instructions that we don't know what they are. Else, if the source is greater than dust, go to here, but this address happens to be the address of this length less than hex 80. And if it goes in here, then you've got a situation of if source is less than dust is less than source plus ling, which means dust is in the middle of this source buffer that's going to be copied, go here and deal with it. But thankfully for us, it didn't go there. Now we can actually sort of, you know, simplify this a little bit because we know that this source greater than dust, it goes to here. Instead of thinking of this as a go to, we could sort of get rid of it and treat it like it's an else. So if we flip the condition and we say, if source is less than length, go to here, else go to there, then that would be sort of the simplified version. If source is less than dust and dust is less than source plus length, do this, else, then it's going to fall through and go to here. And so this is the case where if length is less than 80, but greater than 20, then it goes and does some more move up stuff that we don't know and don't care because we're hunting for rep move s. So we set it greater than 80 and it goes down to this case, got some memory check against, you know, this bit here. We don't know what's up with that, but thankfully that bit is not set. So sorry, so thankfully that bit is set and therefore it doesn't take this case and instead goes here where we ultimately find the rep move s. So basically, no matter what, if it's greater than 80 and this bit is set, then it's guaranteed to always do a rep move s one byte at a time. So an interesting little bit of trivia for you, there is actually this thing called the direction flag. And the direction flag actually controls the direction of copies that occur with a rep move s. So this is a C control flag. And it turns out that based on the direction flag, it could either be incrementing RDI and RSI, or it could actually be decrementing. So it could kind of be copying backwards down towards lower addresses if you want. So sort of interesting to think about what if the attacker somehow could control DF and cause the thing to start copying backwards when the programmers expect it to be copying forwards. Clearly that's going to lead to some sort of memory corruption. Okay, so we picked up our final instruction, instruction 30, rep move s. And my friendly friends, this is where I tell you that this is the last assembly instruction which I am specifically going to try to teach you. Everything after this, is going to be an RTFM situation.